I felt so at home. I understand that the welcome home is your theme, and rightfully so. I fit right in here. Um, in fact, Jeff and I were fixing to move back to Indiana. That's where we're originally from. But I thought maybe we might just move out here instead. We kind of like it here. <laughs> this, is, this is lovely. We like it. And I'm a golfer, so I'm thinking I might be able to really fit in here. So we like it. But, um, yes, I am from uh, Brother Copeland's ministry. I Eight years ago, Jeff and I moved our family from Indiana, which is where we're originally from, southern Indiana. I'm a Hoosier. Go IU. We're IU grads, yes. And then we moved to Texas, and Bobby Knight, of course, followed us. He now coaches Texas Tech. I think it was because we were there. And so we uh, were in Texas, and I, I moved all the way from, from Indiana just to write for Brother Copeland. That was kind of a miracle story in itself. But I write for the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. How many of y'all get that magazine? If you don't, it's free. Just go on kcm.org and sign up for it, and uh, you'll be blessed by it. But that's a great ministry, and it's so fitting because while I'm there working for Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland and Marty and Kelly and the whole family, um, I'm surrounded by faith warriors. You know, that's, that's a good place to be. That's, that's kind of like being here. It's like Mecca of faith. It's a good thing. And so that, that's what I'm going to talk about tonight because I don't know anything else. I'm just so blessed to be there. You know, being in that ministry, we learned that uh, this is the year of fulfillment. Did Brother Copeland, I believe, was just here and maybe spoke that to you all. And this is, he prophesied this is the year of fulfillment. And he's not the only one that's saying that. There are, there are prophets all over the United States and the world saying this is the year of signs and wonders. This is year of favor. This is a year that good things are going to happen. I like those words. How about you? I received that. That makes me want to shout. That's good. So if you don't want to shout, that means your shouter's broken and we need to fix that tonight because that's a good thing. This, this is a good year to be excited. And, and so I've been involved in that. And, and while I'm there, I, I hear this all day long as I'm interviewing partners who got these great miracles. And I'm just surrounded by this great people, these faith-filled people all day long. You just can't have a bad day there. It just doesn't happen. So this is why I'm bringing this to you tonight. I had this whole other thing I was going to talk to you about. And then last week happened. I think you've all had probably a last week like I had. Maybe uh, that's why God had me bring this tonight. As Pastor Maureen said this morning, I'm an author, um, one of my newest books, and I'll have a book signing after this if y'all want to come back and just see me. You don't have to buy the books. But you, I'm not going to tell you like the speaker this morning said, don't buy my books because I'm not coming back right, right away. So y'all buy my books and come back there and see me. But one of my newest books is The Divine Stories of the Yahweh Sisterhood. And um, so I was at Nashville at the Gaylord Hotel doing a book signing for part of the Christian Booksellers Association. I flew in last Monday for that. It was a week long or five days. And I was signing What is Easter, one of my newest children's books. So it was an important week for me to be there. You know, they, they let me off work from KCM to go there. And so it was important for me to be there. So as I said, it's the year of fulfillment. I mean, big things are happening. I found out that Target's carrying my What is Easter book, and, and this has already sold 20,000 copies, and that's a good book. And lots of things are happening, so I'm already seeing the fulfillment happen. I'm just like, praise the Lord, good things are happening. I get on my plane Monday, leave Jeff, with Jeff, my wonderful husband's here. Say hello, Jeff. There's Jeff. And he's there with my two daughters. Yes, he is. He's my better half. We were high school sweethearts, so don't talk to him too much. He has a lot of dirt on me. I don't want you to know all that. But... Um, and so he was home with my daughters, Abby and Allison. They are 13 and 11. So he stayed home with them, and I'm in Nashville. And I'm on the plane ride to Nashville, and I'm just studying and praising the Lord. I have my MP3 player with lots of faith-filled teaching. And then the plane lands, and I get out, and I turn my cell phone back on because, you know, you have to have it off while you're in the plane. I turned it back on, and there was a message. I figured it was Jeff just checking on me. So I played the message, and it was my sister, whose also name is Marty. She's not Marty Copeland, but she's Marty Spaulding. She's a pastor. She and her husband, Jan, have a, a church in Indiana, Stonegate Faith Center. So Marty is in Indiana, and she left me a message. She said, you need to call home right away. Uh, Mom is in the hospital. My mom's name is Marion. And my mother's been battling colon cancer since a year ago, October. But we're standing for her healing because how do you know Jesus heals them all? Amen. That's not an if. It's just a win. I mean, we know what happens. So we're in, we're in great faith with her. But she'd had a bad week, and um, she was in the hospital. The timing. You see, the, devil's, the devil knows this is the year of fulfillment. We're not the only ones that know that. He knows the big things that are in store for us. And so he's going to do everything he can to try to stop that if we'll let him. He can't stop it unless you let him. And that's what happened that night. So I get off the plane and I get this news. And you have a choice to make right then. Am I going to be in fear or am I going to be in faith? Now sometimes, I'll just be honest, I go the fear way and I waller in it for a couple of days until... You know, I get myself back out of it. That is not the right choice. The right choice is faith. So as I, as I listened to the message, I called my sister back, and she said, actually, she said they, they did a scan. Mom is, uh, it's spread to her liver. 
and it spread to her lungs. And they can't, it's so far gone, they can't do treatment. So the doctor said if God didn't perform a miracle, she wouldn't be long for this world. Well, that is really not the news I was hoping to get on a Monday night. Can I share that? This was not the report I wanted. I was fixing to go in and, and minister. I mean, I knew I was going to be ministering here this weekend. And, and I just had finished writing this great faith-filled story about healing for the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Ironically, it was about cancer. So I was prayed up on this one. So I get there. I get to my hotel room. And I'm, I'm vulnerable at this point because my husband isn't with me. I'm by myself. I'm tired. And, and I'm just in my hotel room. And it's one of those nights where I needed to choose the right thing. And I, I'll tell you some advice that will help you. When you're in one of those vulnerable moods, um, be still and know I'm God's a really good verse to go with. You, that way you're not saying things you shouldn't be. But um, I didn't follow that advice. And I, and I just was so sad. So Jeff called to check on me, and I told him everything that had happened in Mom's report. And he said, you know, do you want me to bring the kids, fly there, be with you? What do you need me to do? And I said, you know, Jeff, even if you were sitting right next to me, I don't think it'd matter. Because I just feel more alone right now than I've ever felt in my whole life. I want to know where God is in all this. Because I know that he's a God of his word. I know what I write about every day. I'm surrounded by the best faith people in the world. I write about it. I know it. I know it's in the word. I want to know why, why I haven't seen a manifest in my mother's life yet. See, when it's close to you, your child, your husband, your mom, your dad, yourself, it's harder sometimes to believe. I can believe for lots of other people. Lay hands on him, slap some oil on him. I see him healed all the time. It's so exciting. But when it's my own mom, my emotions get in the way sometimes. How many of you know that's not of God? Emotions are tough. So I laid out across the bed, and the last words I spoke to Jeff or to anyone that night was, I've never felt so alone. I went to sleep. Woke up at 2.30 in the morning praying in tongues. You ever done that? It's a good thing. You ought to try it. Woke up at 2.30 in the morning praying in tongues. Holy Spirit woke me up. And um, I had just purchased a book called Sparkling Gems by Rick Renner. Do y'all know Rick Renner? Wonderful man of God. He was just at the minister's conference out at Kenneth Copeland Ministries a couple weeks ago. Just, well, y'all were there too. Pastor Tom and Marie were there. It's a, that's a great conference. But Rick Renner has a book out called Sparkling Gems. And what it is, it's a daily devotional. And he takes Greek words and then he explains them to you and has a devotion on that. And I thought being a word lover, because I'm a, I'm a journalist. I was trained in journalism at Indiana University. I'm a writer, write children's books and books. I love words. So I thought, well, I'll just get that. Plus, you know, I didn't go to Bible school, so I thought I might need to brush up on my Greek a little bit. So I got this book. Well, at 2.30 in the morning, it's not like I was just led to read this book. It's not like something I was just pressing to read. The Holy Spirit said, get the book. Go open. I hadn't even opened it yet. I had just purchased it at the minister's conference. I opened up the book. I broke the ceiling. It's about this yay thick. It's a good book to get. I didn't realize it was a yearly devotional until I opened it. Well, that was January 24th because it was in the morning. So I opened it up to January 24th. You know what the headline for that day's devotion was? You are never alone. I had my rhema word. You know, sometimes... In this fight of faith, as we're standing in this year of fulfillment, you're going to have to have a rhema word. It's easy to shout. I'm a former college cheerleader. I'm, I can shout with the best of y'all. I mean, I am a good yeller. And I get excited, and I get emotional, and I'm, and I'm all there, and I'm praising and worshiping God. But at those times when you're in your hotel room by yourself, and you get a bad report about something, sometimes it's not so easy to shout. It's harder to see it. And I think, it, you know, the devil, it says the devil comes to steal the word immediately, immediately. So whether when you leave here tonight, if you get in your car and you get a bad phone call or, or you go home and your husband says, you know, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you, or all, all the things that can happen, that the devil is just, he's such a liar. You have to be prayed up. You have to have this word on the inside of you because if you don't have that, when you're laid across the hotel room, bed like I was, you don't have the word to stand on because you don't know what's true. The doctor says she's going to die. What's my word say? She'll live and proclaim the good works of the Lord. She'll live and not die. But I had to know that. I needed to be reminded that day. So God had a rhema word for me. He has one for you too. Well, what I want to talk that the reason I'm bringing this up is because Hebrews 12, 1, just like me at KCM, I'm going to read it to you. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Okay, well, he, Rick Renner tells us in this devotional that I read that was my Raymond word for that day, and I believe it's going to be yours, that the phrase compassed about is taken from a Greek word, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but it means to be completely encircled by something. So we can read the verse this way. Wherefore, seeing we also are completely encircled by godly people who fought the good fight of faith and held fast to the word of God and saw God's promises come to pass in their lives. That's a good place to be. 
And you know, there are many examples of these hall of faith kind of people in the Bible. We've got David and Sarah and Hannah and Moses and Joseph, and there's so many Noah. And then there's lots of contemporary examples of that. I mean, Pastor Tom and Maureen are great examples of that, right? Amen. To believe God for this beautiful facility. My sister traveled with Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland for a couple of years managing their book table. She was here a couple of times. She saw hundreds of churches in those years, and she told me, she said, this church is the best church she was in. The excellence that y'all show, the care that you show the people, and every from A to Z, y'all had it right. And um, I just wanted to share that with you. I already told Pastor Tom. But so y'all have, you have great exa- examples right here with Pastor Tom and Maureen. Just the, even the vision down to the pillars. And I heard all the testimonies, how they had to stand in faith to have it open on Father's Day because the city kind of came against them a little bit about screws and the lights or something. Something crazy. It's at those times you have to dig your heels in and go, nope, mm-mm. I know what my Father's Word says. And that we're called to be here and we're opening on Father's Day. See, those are the times you have to dig your heels and you don't just go, well, I guess it wasn't God. Must not work for me. Works for everybody else. Mm-mm. Don't don't have, be still and know I'm God at that point. That's what you. Have, that's the verse you have to go for. So that that's where I was, and I got my word. And I want you to have your word tonight. I want you to know that I'd like to be on that list of the Hall of Faith people. I want to be in that that category. How many of you want to be in that category? I know I do, but you don't get in that Hall of Faith list. You don't you don't get to be on there by giving up or throwing the towel in. And, and, and that's what our emotions want to do. That's what they want to do. We're human. We, we have a most, especially women, I think. I think we struggle with that a little more than men. My husband's pretty matter of fact. I mean, he gets it. It's a word from God. It's a done deal. Done on it. And I start going, yeah, but where's God and all this? You know, I have my hormonal days, he calls them. With three girls in the house, we have a lot of those. So you might pray a special prayer for Jeff. But, uh, but yes, I have some of those. And it's at those days I have to have my word. It's at those days I have to know what's on, what it says in here. And, and, and this is when you shout. You shout before the victory, before you see it, right? Because faith is the things that we, we can't see. That's what it says. The things that are about Jesse Duplantis, and you've had him here too. He says, when, it, when I can't see it, then I know my faith is working really well. That's a pretty good way to look at that. Not that, well, when I can't see it, nothing's happening. No, it's really stirring things up. I mean, there's good things going on. But that's when I get, and I, and I become my own cheerleader. I encourage myself in the Lord. I get away by myself. Sometimes I'm driving my car to and from things. Or I might, This night I was in the hotel room, and I got up and I said, my mother shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And then I had big business meetings that week with, with different editors and publishers. The devil knew that. He knew that there was big things in store. I was going to be signing new deals and things. He wanted to stop all that. So I said, I'm the head and not the tail. I prosperous. Everything I touch prospers and succeeds. I got all my word. I mean, I had about 52 things I said. I was hoarse by the time morning came. And, that, and you know what? It was a good thing. Because by the time that I was able to call my mother that next morning, I was fired up. I was fired up with faith. And I could speak in her life. And she was already fired up anyway. She said, well, I know. She said, well, I really can't talk right now and put my lipstick on. And, get, and she had her fur coat on, my, my sister said. Because we're going to go out for lunch. I already told them I'm going to be released. I was like, well, bless God. That's a good thing. She wasn't moved one bit. Now, I was moved a little bit the night before. My mother wasn't moved one bit because she already had her word. God already told her what to do. She's been standing and doing the things God told her to do since she was first diagnosed. And so that wouldn't move one bit. And I said, well, Mama, why did you let him do all those tests? She said, well, you know, I thought about that. She said, but I just figured when you write my story in the Believer's Voice of Victory, it'd be good to have some documentation of how bad it really was. (laughs) How how are you going to argue with that kind of faith? I believe she made the Hall of Faith on Monday. I believe she did. I believe I I just put her in that. So, um, so we just fired each other up. We, we just preached for about 35 minutes until I had to go to my first meeting. And that's the way it ought to be. We have to be there for each other because we're all going to have off days because we're human. But in this year, it's so critical, this year of fulfillment, I don't want you to get to the end of 2006 and say, you know, I know that Brother Copeland said it was the year of fulfillment, but I didn't see anything fulfilled. Because I want to tell you something. 2005 was a year of glory. That's, that was what it's prophesied. A lot of people didn't see the glory. Now, why didn't they? Did God fail? God doesn't mess up. We, they missed it. If you didn't see the glory in 2005, God's a merciful God, but he can't go against his own word. And if you're digging up your seed with your negative confessions and things, he can't work. You've tied his hands. I don't, I don't want to see you do that again because I've done that too many times. I've gone around the mountain too many times, right? Not this year. This is not the year to be going around that mountain too many times. This is the year to pass the test. But that, because it's the year of fulfillment, there's going to be br- great challenges, great tests. I know that Joe Losing always says, you can't have a great testimony without a great test. You can't have a great victory without a great battle. Is that right? Some of you are in the middle of those battles today. I know it by the Spirit of the Lord. Some of you are struggling with some serious illnesses. 
Some of you are drowning in a sea of debt, and you're coming in and saying, well, bless God, everything's great. You know, people say, how are you doing? Oh, things are great. But if they knew what was going on in your home life, they'd know it wasn't. They didn't know that you and your husband are talking divorce. They didn't know that your credit card debt's $80,000. They didn't know because it's embarrassing to share those things because we're people of faith. We're trying to do it right. We're in the, I mean, you wouldn't be here if your heart wasn't right. You wouldn't be here on a Sunday evening. But the devil knows what the God has in store for you. So we have to dig our heels in people and really fight the fight of faith this year. You know, encouraging yourself in the Lord is one way that's helped me. And I didn't just make that up. That's biblical. David, who they said was a man after God's own heart, correct? David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want to read that to you. It's one of my very favorite stories. If you have your Bibles, you might open up to 1 Samuel 30. And I'm going to start reading with the first verse. Now, I have the Amplified because Miss Gloria likes that, and I figured if she likes it, that's good enough for me as well. How about you? Okay, I'm going to start reading, and if you don't find it, that's okay because I'll just read it out loud. 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. Now, when David and his men came home to Ziklag on the third day, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid on the south and on Ziklag and had struck Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women and all who were there, both great and small, captive. They killed no one but carried them off and went on their way. So David and his men came to the town, and behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. How many of you know that was a really bad day? (laughs) That was a bad day to be David. Then David and the men with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. I've been there. I've been there when I couldn't have any more tears come out of my tear ducts. I had, I mean, I had cried a lot. David's two wives had also been taken captive and skip on down. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved. Each man for his sons and daughters, but David encouraged himself and strengthened himself in Lord his God. Okay, let's just recap. Okay, David and his men are out doing the work of God. God told them to do this battle, right? They're out serving God. They come back to their hometown, and everything that they love is gone. Their wives, their children, everything's been burned. And they were out doing God's work. Like, just because you're doing God's work doesn't mean you're not going to be attacked. You'll probably be attacked more because the devil knows you're making a big, big old mess for him. So just don't think, well, I must, not, I must not be in God's will. No, you're probably smack dab in the middle of God's will if you're getting some attacks. That's why you pray against that thing. Anyway, so here's David. So if that isn't bad enough, his own men go, well, it's your fault. You're the reason this has all happened. So they want to stone him. Okay. Now, I've had some bad days, but I've never had one that bad. I mean, that's from, you know, Jeff, the girls had never said they were going to stone me because things were my fault. I mean, that, that's a bad day. So David, he knew what to do. He went away by himself, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And that's what we have to do. Because if David hadn't, do you know that 72 hours later, if you read on, he was made king? 70, do you know how close he was to his breakthrough? 72 hours he was made king. What if he quit and said, well, that didn't work. I'm not going to battle for the Lord anymore. I mean, this is how I'm repaid. And that would be an easy time to get into offense, wouldn't it, right then? And now my own men turn on me? Well, this is really fun, God serving you. Thanks a lot. I mean, you know, I'd rather do anything than this. That's, that is the wrong decision. You want to go, eh, wrong thing. Like, that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong thinking. But David was smarter than that. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And 72 hours later, he fulfilled his destiny. This is the year of destiny. I don't want you to miss yours. I don't want you to miss yours. You know, sometimes your victory is so close, so close. But before you will encounter that victory, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Do you know that? Almost, actually, you can almost say almost always it gets worse before it gets better. And that's why you have to really know the word and dig your feet in and stand firm on what God has already told you. And if you don't know the word, you can't stand firm in it. I mean, coming, coming to church on Sundays and Saturdays, that's a great thing. But if you aren't spending some time in this word at home in your own private time, when you get those bad reports, you have nothing to stand on. You won't know what to shout. You won't know what to encourage yourself in. I mean, it's okay to come and run and have Pastor Tom pray for you, and that's wonderful. But what if he isn't there? What if you're somewhere where he can't get to you? You better know the word. You better be in it. You better know your promises. If you don't know it, you can't proclaim it. So I want to talk about the story of, now now Kenneth pronounces it Jairus, and I figured he probably knows. I always called it Jairus, and apparently that wasn't right. So the story of Jairus, and that's in Mark 5. So let's turn there. I like this story too. Okay, it's 5, and we're going to start with verse... 21. I'm reading out the NIV this time. Okay. And you know, this, this is also the one but with the women with the issue of blood, but that's not the, what we're going to focus on here. Let's see. Where do I want to start? 
Jesus crossed over. Okay. When Jesus had cro- again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him. While he was by the lake, one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Now, first of all, did he know who Jesus was? He knew exactly who Jesus was, and he knew Jesus' reputation. And he came and he said, I want you to do this for my daughter. He didn't say, if you can, or if you you have time, or if you're able. He knew he could do it. So that's what he said. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed in. Now we're going to go down and skip past the woman with the issue of blood, because this all happens at the same time. So while he's waiting for his miracle, somebody else gets theirs. Another time you could be in offense, am I right? Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, right. I come to get, get help for my daughter, and like you're messing with this lady? I mean, come on. Come on, Jesus. Let's go. We're kind of impatient, aren't we? You know, and then, and then she gets her miracle, and as soon as she gets her miracle, let's see what happens. Going down here, it says, um, verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter's dead, they said. I hope they said it in, like nicer than that. Your daughter's dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Okay, so while he's waiting for Jesus to come, she gets her miracle, and they tell him, your daughter's dead. You have a choice to make right there. Right there, just like I did with the phone call. Right then he could have said, well, I guess there was just one miracle today. That must be a limit. We didn't get ours. I got here too late. My daughter's dead. What did Jesus say? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, fear not, don't be afraid, just believe. See, that's it. Right there, right there's your choice. You can go with fear or you can go with faith. If you go with faith, you get the year of fulfillment. If you go with fear, at the end of this year, you'll go, well, I don't think it was really true because I didn't get anything I prayed for. No, because you had a really bad mouth this year. You said things that were of, the, of fear. You didn't have, you weren't full of faith. You didn't, know, you didn't know what the word said. You didn't dig your heels in. You dug up your seed every chance you got. Don't do that. Put your shovel up. Don't be digging up your seed. Don't do that. Jairus didn't dig up his seed, and his daughter, if you read on down, she was healed, and they got out and fixed her something to eat. Now, if he would have chosen fear, he'd have buried his daughter instead of fixed her something to eat that night. Is that right? That's how close. See, he was so close to his miracle. Right there, it was just a quick split decision, and he made the right choice, just like David. David made the right choice, or he'd have been stoned and never would have been king. I mean, you can be that close to your miracle, that close. But if you don't dig your heels in and stand, this year of fulfillment will come and go, and you're not going to get your miracle. And I want mine. How about you? I want mine. You know, I I think it's interesting that Jesus said, fear not. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Darlene Bishop. How many of y'all know Darlene Bishop? She's a wonderful preacher in, in Ohio. She has a book out called Your Life Follows Your Words. Wonderful book. If you haven't read it, I suggest you get it. It's published by Legacy um, International. That's who did Yahweh's Sisterhood book. They're a publisher out of Denver. Anyway, Darlene said, and this is God gave her a revelation one night while she was asleep. I think she woke up praying in tongues too. That must be a, a good thing. But that the word believe, I just told the moms of destiny this. This is a good thing. You'll, if you have notes, write this down. God showed her the word believe across the wall, and each one had light coming out of it. And each letter stood for something important. Because Emmanuel lives... I expect victory, and then she says, every time. I guess that would be one word, every time. (laughs) If you're from Texas, it is, every time. So it's because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. (laughs) Now that's good, isn't it? That's right. That's all you need. If you've got that, if you you say, oh, Michelle, you know, I haven't been in the word as much, and I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of the storm, and now I'm trying to build that house in the middle of the storm. Hey, that's all you need right there. Because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. I expect victory this year. I expect victory in your lives this year. Whatever you're believing God for, whether it's financial breakthrough, Pastor Tom just leaned over and said, this is the year that God's people were more prosperous. Is that what you said? More prosperous than the other year. I received that word from the prophet of God. Do you? Get in on that. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't say, well, I'm sure it works for Brother Tom, but I don't think it works for me. You know, he didn't know we've got all this debt and I can't even pay for my daughter's braces. Well, get that ugly mouth and be still. You need to say, bless God, I, I am going to be so prosperous this year. I'm the head, not the tail. Everything I touch prospers and succeeds. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Is that right? Does your father? You know, they say in business, and especially in the publishing world, they say it's all in who you know. Well, I know the king of kings, so like I'm in. Wherever I go, I have favor. I walk in favor wherever I go. And you can walk in favor wherever you go too, because guess what? You know the same dad. We have the same dad. We have the very same dad, and he adores you just as much as he adores me. God is no respecter of persons, but he's a respecter of faith. 
He can't move without your faith. So you got to get your faith on. Get it on this year. Don't leave it in your closet. Get that faith on. It's fashionable every day of the year. Okay, I want to talk a little. Just, we're just about out of time, but one more thing. Um, I don't know how many of you know Chip Brim. It's, do you all know Billy Brim? Okay, she's a wonderful uh, teacher. She was out at the minister's conference in, at KCM too, and she's just, well, you have to hear. She has her little hanky and goes, whoo, have you ever seen her preach? She's really a hoot. I like her a lot. But she, um, her son Chip Brim is also a preacher. I think he actually worked in the sports world for a while, but he has, I got one of his tapes when he preached at EMIC, Eagle Mountain International Church, which is our church, um, KCM's church. So anyway, he was preaching, and I thought this was so good. God gave him a vision. And see, I was a former sports writer in my life as a reporter back in Indiana. I covered a lot of things, but sports was my last beat before God delivered me and took me to the Canaan land, which I'm in now. And so I was covering sports. And, you know, um, so I got into this because I'm a real sports fan. Jeff will tell you I watch sports more than he does. I love it. I mean, March Madness, oh, I'm all over it. I love it. Go IU. Go Texas Tech. But this was a football uh, vision, and God showed Chip Brim. He said, because Chip was burdened for the people of God. He said, you know, Lord, I don't understand. Why aren't they seeing the victories? What, I mean, I know your word works. Have you ever wondered that? Like you see people standing, and it just looks like they're going down further and further. Listen, we all see that, and, and, and we all question sometimes. And so Chip just said, you know, God, I don't understand. And God showed him this vision of the football field. And all these Christians were running toward, they're running their race. Just like we read in Hebrews 1. They're running their race. They're pressing towards their goal. They're walking out their destiny. It's your fulfillment. They're heading towards the goal line. And they get to the one-yard line, and they all just stop. They perish right there in the one-yard line. And Chip wept, cried, Lord, what happened to your people? Said they just didn't believe me long enough. They gave up. They gave up. They gave in. They threw in the towel. They quit. If you quit on the one-yard line, you don't get the touchdown. I don't know a lot about football, I'll be honest, but I know that much. <laughs> if you don't cross the goal line, you ain't getting those six points. Not happening. Well, you're not going to get your dreams miracles this year either. I titled this message, Hold On for Your Miracle. You have to cross that goal line. And sometimes it's going to be harder than you've ever believed. There'll be, there'll be some of the defenders bigger and meaner than you are. And they'll, and they'll be right in your face, and they'll come when you're the most vulnerable. And if you don't take it on one side, the devil will say, well, let's try cancer. Maybe she'll take cancer. And you say, no, I'm, I'm healed. I'm the healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. And so he goes, well, she wouldn't fall for that one. Let's see. Let's, let's have her kid get on drugs. That'll be good. Let's try that. Okay. So your, your child gets arrested and on drugs. And you say, nope, not my baby. Mm-mm. My children are going to rise up and call me blessed. We've got a great relationship. That is my seed. That is my seed. And you can't have him, devil. And he says, well, they wouldn't take that either. Let's see. I know, we'll have somebody sue him. Oh, that'll be good. Let's try, let's try a lawsuit. And you say, mm-mm, nope. Every weapon formed against me will not prosper. And every tongue that rises against me has to be stilled. Well, daggone it. What, we're out of things. What else you got? You know, if you, he'll, he'll try on every front. But if you will stand on the word of God, how did Jesus fight the devil? With the word. He spoke it out. He didn't think it. He spoke it out. He said it. The word, we have to speak it out. Sometimes you've got to speak to those things. Actually, all the time you have to speak to those things. I don't care if people at the stoplight think you're nuts talking to yourself. Just go ahead and bless God. Just, just say it. I mean, I have, I have the most sanctified SUV in Texas. I, we are praying all the way to and from all the time. And I'm, and I'm confessing those things, and it works. And it works every time. Every time, Darlene says. So I'm about out of time, and I, and I, and I want to just finish with this. I don't want you to miss it this year. I don't want you to miss whatever God has for you. Because there's big things. I had my Moms of Destiny. We, I just got to speak to that lovely group. And Holly, thanks for having me. That was such an honor. What a, what a dynamic group. If you're a mom and you're not in that, what is wrong with you? That is a good group to be in. That is a wonderful. I wish I were here. I would be a part of that. they got the cutest little sweatshirts that has little crowns on it, little sparkly crown earrings. I'm all over that. That's a Texas thing. I mean, <laughs> sparkle, I am so there. Holly's going to come shop with me sometime. We're going to have fun in Dallas. So, But you need to be in that. But I was telling the Moms of Destiny, you know, this is the year, January is the year of resolutions or the, the month of resolutions. And, you know, I don't put much stock in those because every year I say I'm going to lose 15 pounds. I did last year, but, you know, that was just because Marty Copeland was like cracking the whip. And so, you know, it's, being out there is a blessing and a curse sometimes. You can't sneak Snickers in your office because she'll know about it. She's, she's confiscated him from mine. No, she really hasn't. But she is a, a good support there. But the thing about, about this year, don't make resolutions. Just make a list to God. And I, I had them do an assignment. I said, I want you to list five things tonight 
that you want God to do this year for you. That's not selfish. God wants you to believe him big. He want, you can't outdream God. I've tried it. He'll always one up you. It's great. You can't outdream God. So I want you to make a list tonight. Just five things, maybe more. If you want to make more, go ahead. God's big enough for all of your, all of your desires. And what you'll find out is really the desires he put in your heart, I mean, he put them there anyway. He wants to bless you with them. He's a good God. God wants to give his children good things. I mean, we want to give our kids good things, right? How much more does he want to bless us? So make your list tonight. Take it to the Father. Then get your word out. If you haven't got it dusted off for a while, get her out. Dust it off. Get in there and find out what the Lord has promised you. Find out. If you're believing, I was using example, if you're believing God for a baby, you've been, you, maybe you've miscarried or you've lost a baby or you can't get pregnant, and the doctors say, well, you know, like my mother, he'll take act of God because there's just no way. <laughs> Well, you don't know my God, apparently. Let's see. Sarah was like wailed. Didn't even have all, I mean, her parts weren't even doing the right stuff at that point. And she got pregnant, right? I mean, you don't, God didn't even have to have the parts and he can make a baby. So you just get in there and you find your Preston. We've got Sarah. We've got Hannah. Whatever it is you're believing for, there's a precedent. That's your promise. And God wants you to bring it to his attention. He, he gets so excited when you say, hey, you're no respecter of persons. My faith is on. I've got it out of the closet wearing it today. Hannah, Sarah, me. I want that baby. My niece Mandy did that, and she's due February 15th. The doctor told her she couldn't get pregnant. Hmm, they had a baby shower for her yesterday. Big, big, huge boy, nine pounds. Yeah, I think she may have believed too much because it's a big one. It's a big one. So whatever it is you're believing God for, this is your year. You need to get excited and you need to shout the victory even before you see it because God is working this year. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Very good. Awesome. It is a good faith Thank message. You. Thank you so much. I <laughs> appreciate Adam. that. Awesome.